What up, what up? What's going on, good people? This is your boy C Will back to you with another video. Super excited, man, because we're talking about DDR5. Man, you saw the thumbnail. We got we got memory, we got Rams on deck. <laughs> nah, man, but like for real, for real though. Um, DDR5 is coming. And so what we're gonna do about it? Let's find out. All right, so uh man, I thought I wouldn't be talking about this for a long period of time, but evidently. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now, and DDR5 has actually been a topic of discussion um, amongst websites, forums, and all this different type of stuff. And I know you're wondering, it's like, man, we haven't even, we're not even done with DDR4 yet. Um, I know. I mean, if you think about graphics cards for a second, they're on GDDR6. Matter of fact, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, GDDR6X, uh, which is insane. But when we talk about for desktops, PCs, and stuff like that, um, DDR5 is coming, um, but there's a few caveats to that. Um, it's going to be some hardware and stuff that you're going to need. It's going to be a lot of stuff. Let's talk about the comparison between DDR4 and then DDR5, and then we'll see exactly what we need to be able to run that particular hardware and if you even need it right now. So let's take a look. So I am on um, PC Gamer's website, and I will definitely put links to everything that I have in the description below. But there's this article um, and it talks about Corsair's DDR5 primer uh, has me dreaming of running one terabytes of RAM, uh, which is ridiculous, by the way. Um, but if we take a look here, it talks about some stuff in this article, but I actually want to go down here. Um, there's a DDR5 primer PDF, so I'm going to pull it up here. Um, so it talks about the introduction of DDR4, it says it's been over six years since DDR4 hit the market. Uh, top end speed is now reaching 5,000 megahertz or 5,000 mega transfers. It's a lot that's going on between that. Uh, but when it comes to the high end overclock kits, uh, but if we scroll down here, um, I'm going to kind of skip over some of this stuff. It talks about a recap of DDR4. Now, DDR3 to DDR4 was slow and steady, um, but they started off at 2,400 megahertz, effective clock speeds, and now we're hitting 5,000. Um, in terms of capacity, the overall density uh, for DDR4 modules has jumped from four gigabytes initially to 16 gigabytes on standard size modules with up to 32 gigabytes in 2019 for the largest DIMM. So, so hey, if this video is doing anything for you right now, if it's giving you any type of value, make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. Keep that in mind. Like, so like currently right now, I have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It's Trident Z, 3600 megahertz. Um, I have two 16 gigabyte sticks, right? And so um, on my motherboard, I have four slots, but I'm only using two dual channel memory. And so, yeah, so, but right now, if I wanted to, um, you know, if I wanted to just max it out, I could do 32 gig sticks or in each slot that I have which will give a total of 128 gigabytes. And that's what Windows 10, even though that we have Windows 11 out right now, Windows 10 um, can, can read up to 128 gigabytes. Uh, for the most part, most people, most people only need 32, uh, but you have some people who have, they use this stuff for like a workstation and um, they may, you know, run different types of editing software and CAD software, 3D modeling, and all this different type of stuff, which may require more RAM, right? Uh, so if we scroll down here, beautiful system, my course here. But if we scroll down, um, it talks about the actual increase in the, the bandwidth, uh, which, you know, this gets into this like empties is mega transfers. Uh, so like right now from JetX specs, um, DDR4 tops out at 3200 mega transfers or 3200 megahertz, right? Which initially it was 2133, um, but it's top, it tops out at 3200 megahertz. Now you have overclock kits. So I don't want you to get that confused, um, especially when it comes to the Intel, like their base um, is 3200 megahertz. And then they have overclock kits that you can be able to get. So like my kit is overclocked to 3600 megahertz, but the base that supports for AMD is the same thing. So, um, but they're talking about with DDR5 is 4,800 mega transfers or 4,800 megahertz. And so that's huge. That's base, what it's going to start out at. And so if you scroll down here, it gives like a little time frame. And in terms of the actual, 
you know, how many gigabits per second as far as the actual memory bandwidth. And so basically for DDR4, we're pretty much doubling the actual bandwidth, which is insane. Um, further refinements, um, it's going to talk about uh, on die, it's going to have error uh, correction. So it's going to be able to correct errors. It really doesn't mean a whole lot for you and me. <laughs> So when it comes to power, DDR5 is definitely going to be more power efficient. Um, so we're talking about going from 1.2 volts on DDR4 to 1.1 volts on DDR5. And that's pretty cool. Um, the density. So here's like one of the kickers here. So it talks about, just like I was saying earlier, so DDR4 maxes out at 32 gigabytes per stick. So per stick of RAM, you got 32 gigabytes per stick, right? But for DDR5, I'm going to go up to theoretically 128 gigabytes per module, which is crazy. That's four times the density of DDR4. So basically, somewhere in the future, <laughs> somebody's going to be able to use 512 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is insane. And it's going to be even higher when it comes to the actual workstations because they support a total of eight banks, four on this side, four on the other side. Uh, when you talk about like your thread ripper and like X299, you know, motherboards and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's amazing. So if we go down here, I just want to show you this chart. So what are the differences? We talked about some, but um, here's where you can actually be able to see it for your own eyes. So if we were looking at this right here, we were talking about, you know, max density, uh, 16 gigabits on DDR4, 64 gigabits on uh, gigabits on DDR5. The max dim size, we go from 32 to 128. Uh, as far as the max frequency, uh, which is the baseline, not overclock, just the baseline, we're going from 3,200 megahertz to 6,400 megahertz. Um, total bandwidth, uh, let's see, banks. Um, let's go down here to... Obviously, when we're talking about the voltage, it's 1.2 volts to 1.1. And that's pretty much it. You got to ask yourself, do you need to upgrade to DDR5? And I'm going to tell you, not right now. And here's the reason why. <laughs> so, hey, if this video is doing anything for you right now, if it's giving you any type of value, make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. So if we take a look at this other article, um, it talks about the first 32 gigabyte DDR5 RAM kits land for retail for $311 and it's already sold out. This is by Team Group. And so Team Group, uh, you know, they are definitely one of the major players when it comes to uh, RAM um, and, you know, from the retail sector. And they actually, these went on sale um, on Amazon and Newegg. So if we take a look at Amazon, um, yeah. They were already starting off, as we talked about, 4,800 megahertz when it comes to this. Um, and I believe like the timings on the memory uh, were like super loose, but wouldn't really worry about that right now because it's all about the actual performance. And we're not going to know what the performance is until we get the actual hardware. Um, this also went on sale um, at Newegg um, as well. And so, yeah, see, look at the, look at the time. It's 40. 40, 40, 40, 77, which is like crazy. Like the RAM I have is CL16, um, which is the Trident Z kit. And the actual time is on here is CL16, 19, 1939 um, at 1 1.35 volts. <laughs> so, yeah, we're talking about this DDR5 is going to be crazy, you know, when it comes to that type of stuff. But here's the thing, though. Obviously, you're going to need hardware, in order to run DDR5. It's not, DDR5 is not going to work with your current hardware, which is the reason why I said, hey, you really don't need to think about upgrading right now unless you're going to be um, a person that's going to be, you know, doing just a brand new build and you want to future-proof yourself, then yeah, that makes sense. But I want you to think about it. I upgrade my stuff all the time. And I'm just thinking about this. In order, the first you know, hardware that's going to be supported for DDR5 is actually going to be Intel with their Alder Lake uh, 12th gen CPUs, uh, which anytime Intel comes out with new CPUs, they come out with new motherboards. All the new features that they're going to be talking about, like PCIe, you know, 5.0, 
um, you know, DDR5, this is, you know, going to be compatible with their new hardware. So that means that if you're already on Intel and you want to get a 12th gen chip, if you want to get the, the best use out of it, you're going to need the uh, 12th gen motherboards, which are like the Z600 series. Um, so let's take a look here. Obviously, they're talking about this is not going to be available until somewhere in the next month or so. Um, and this is still speculation. <laughs> so we got a lot of people saying that, hey, maybe towards the end of October. Um, you have some people that are saying maybe November or December, then um, definitely heading into, you know, the next CES 2022, which is going to be in January next year. So uh, where, you know, but you're going to need a Z690 board. So that, that means a new motherboard and they're going to be super expensive because that's just the area that we're in right now when it comes to the market. The new motherboard, new CPU, and then DDR5 RAM. Those three things are expensive. The high-end stuff is going to be even more expensive than this. So when it comes to the pricing, it's, it's going to be crazy. And I think this is just an example of what the 10,000 series was. But so if we went to Amazon, right? And 11700K. So I actually bought one of these for a build I just did for my friend. He got it from Micro Center. It's an eight core, 16 thread chip. Um, it's the i7 11700K. Um, he actually got his for a really good deal. He got his for like 300 bucks. I don't know what's going on with this right now. Um, but it's like he got his for like 330 or something like that. But this is 389 right now which is crazy, by the way. Um, but imagine, so imagine you getting a 12700K, eight cores, 16 threads, and it costs like 450, maybe, right? And so that's 450 for CPU. And then if you were getting a new motherboard, it's probably gonna be between three to 400 bucks for the Z690. Um, and then you're talking about the actual RAM, because if, we if we're going by, what the article said, 32 gigs in RAM was 311. So 450, maybe on the low side, another 300, 750 plus another 300. So you're talking about $1,000 just for potentially, just for CPU, motherboard, and RAM, just so you could be able to take advantage of DDR5. I don't think that's worth it unless you use your system components to make money for a living. Um, then if you need that extra performance, potential performance, then absolutely. But just for upgrading, I don't think that's worth it. And speaking of, and if you're on AMDs in, in terms of trying to take advantage of DDR5, it's going to have to be with AMD Zen 4, <laughs> which is not expected until late 2022. Um, and there's been some rumors and stuff that's going around saying that, hey, we may see it you know, towards like the first quarter, maybe second quarter of 2022, but I doubt it. Um, but that's when they're actually going to support um, DDR5. So I'm not, you know, really in a, uh, I'm not in a rush, you know, if, if that makes sense. I think uh, right now, if it's probably a bad time to do a bill right now, but if you had to have a bill, um, I would definitely go with 3,600 megahertz you know, saying on the memory side, at least 32 gigabytes of memory. And here's the reason why I say 32 gigs, because I think 16 gigabytes for memory um, is not enough anymore. And here's the reason why. Main reason why. I recently did a video, uh, Far Cry 6. And as you can see, my overlay that's right here, I'm going to play this. And if you see the overlay, this is playing at 4K, okay? This is the this RAM that you see right here is my actual system here. It's it's you see that? That's 15,000. It's almost 16,000 meg. So it's using 15 gigs. VRAM up here is using like 11,000 and something. Well, I'm playing at 4K. But this right here alone should tell you 16 gigs of RAM is not enough. Um this day and age when you're talking about playing games and um, a lot of stuff is being required. So I would definitely just look into if you're not at 32 gigs of RAM right now, look look into upgrading just your DDR4 RAM and wait until next year 
to possibly upgrade to DDR5, maybe late next year um, at that. Unless, you know, you plan on building a new PC, you know, saying the next month or so, I will wait till Intel stuff comes out. If you had to have a new PC, you was doing it for Christmas time, go Intel. Um, I heard that their new, that new generation of stuff is going to be pretty good, but we're not going to know until they actually release, until they actually come out. So, you know, that's my thoughts when it comes to stuff like that. So the only people that I know that would even need even anything close to DDR5 um, is if you are doing workstation type stuff, video editing, because uh, Adobe Premiere and After Effects takes up a lot of a lot of RAM. So that actually, um, that increase in clock speed and the actual bandwidth um, is going to be tremendous. Um, you have people that, that do 3D modeling and a lot of different type of stuff. Those type of people that I know that could definitely be able to take advantage of DDR5. If you just like to play games um, and, you know, every now and then you may do some video editing and stuff like that, DDR4 is more than enough. Um, I would just focus on increasing your actual, um, the size of memory that you have. So if you only have 16 gig and you're doing video editing and stuff like that, up it to 32 or 64 gigs, um, you'll be fine. Um, but again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you plan on upgrading to DDR5, um, if this video helped you out, definitely hit like, hit subscribe, share the video, and hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. And man, I'll see you in the next video.